Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Art Verhoeven from A Art Light, and uh, in this video I want to show you my color picker plugin. In my last video I already showed you how to install uh, my plugins. So in this video I already I start with an already installed uh, color picker plugin, and you can see here the the macros that. Uh, that are installed with this plugin. Uh, I also created already uh, a little show with some color presets and with some groups of fixtures of different fixture types. Um, what we need to know of here is that uh, we have here three fixture types that do not have color information. So we will not include these in our color picker. Then we have the first six fixture types that have information, but the first type is a supergroup of uh, other fixture, other groups of fixture types, like uh, the beam, spot, quantum wash, and robin wash. Uh, the parlets are not in the supergroup uh, because I want to demonstrate to you that you don't have to include all of the groups in the supergroup you can create supergroups of every combination of other groups that you want uh, if you uh, later uh, choose the color for the supergroup then the color will change for all the subgroups that are included in this supergroup in this case uh, i assume that the parlets form part of the uh, the frontal lights and we don't want to change the color of the faces and when we change the color of the stage. Uh, sorry, I want to clear this, not store this. I want to clear everything now. And then um, let's go to, to the command where we have our macros. Uh, the first macros I already talked about in the other video. And now we're going to concentrate on these three macros. There's the create color pricker. Uh, that's what it's all about. And there is uh, the create icons library. That's the first one we have to run because we cannot create a color picker without an icons library. The color picker is based on buttons that are in the layout. And uh, these buttons have images, icons, and these icons have to be in the library so that the plugin will be able to uh, to find them and to use them so we have first to load the icons that we need from our usb device uh, to run this macro the usb device has to be attached to the board uh, so that it can find the uh, the images that are on the usb device Okay, when we open this, when we run this icons library, the first thing is that it asks is a layout number where we want the icons to reside. Uh, we can use any layout that uh, we choose to. Uh, I keep it to, to layout 20, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I've layout 20 is free, so I'm just keep it to the, to the default value. The layout wide. Uh, is the wide of the, the screen that we want to put the layout in. In this uh, case, I want to put it in screen one and use all of screen one for this layout. Uh, screen one has 10 blocks, not 11, but these blocks are not really square. And so uh, we put 11 here to compensate that. And this is the default value. So let's just do please and go to the next uh, pop-up that's asking for screen height, which that is four, which is also the default value in this pop-up. Then we ask, then they ask for the layout macros start. Uh, the layout macro start, we need uh, for each button in our layout, we need a macro and for each button we need an image so we need some space to put 
these macros and put these images. Uh, I'll start this on 601 uh, to be out of range of other things. Uh, when we create different uh, pictures, then uh, we might need a lot of space for for some of macros and images. So it's important to keep track of where you have uh, the things in your show, the objects in your show, where you have them stored. Uh, I keep this on the default value and the start macro image layout images I also keep on the default value. It's nice to have the same value for those two so that each image and each uh, macro has the same number. Um, the first library image, these are the images that we are going to import from the USB device. And uh, they can start at 14 because image 1 to 13 is used by the MI console itself. I will change this, I put it on 101, so uh, then I have some space for images that might be already in our show. Uh, you can put it as like the other things in any space that you want, uh, as long as it's big enough to hold all the images that uh, we're going to load. When we have this, then it starts working. and. Uh, these are not too many images in this case, so now it's already uh, finished. And let's go to uh, to a, a layout view. And in the layout view, we search for our layout number 20, that is here. And we zoom to fit, and then uh, we have to make it even a little bigger, like this. So uh, there is our images and for later use we will store this on here for example and we give it a name so that we have it identified and there's our image library. Later I'll explain how we can use this library but now first we're going to uh, to create our color picker. That's what it's all about in this video. When we run the macro, it starts asking for group's range. If you remember well, uh, we will use group 1 through 6. So we will change this, uh, this number. I will say it's going from 1 through 6. As you can see, we can use, use the buttons of the MA and uh, we'll as well can use the button of the normal keyboard if you want to. Uh, color preset range, we put on 1 through 13 because we have 13 color presets. You can use any color presets you want and the plugin uh, will use exactly the color that you have in these color presets as long as you have your color preset set for all of the uh, fixtures that are in your groups. And uh, there's no space between the ranges uh, from start to end, and all of them need to be filled. Okay, please. And then it asks for layout number. I keep this on the default value. It asks again for the Y of the, this layout, uh, since I want it on screen 1, full screen, I can use here also the default values for the white and height. Uh, also going to use the default values for the image pool offset, the sequence pool offset, and the macro pool offset in this uh, in, in this, this picker, in this color picker. Okay, when I have all these, it's going to do a lot of things. As you see, it's going to create 78 sequences. Uh, and it's going to create also 78 macros. And it's going to create 78 
images. Uh, and well, let's have a look at what it is creating. Uh, we go to a layout view and we do a zoom to fit. So then we can see that now the macros are created, they're set into the layout view, they're giving the colors uh, that we selected. And when it's ready, it's giving some images on them. And when we go with zoom to fit, and we make it a little bigger, there it is. Uh, okay, then we can see that the images are scaled so that uh, the combined images uh, will fill exactly the space that we assign to it. Well, we will want to store this, of course, for later use. So let's store it here and call it color. And now once it is stored here and it's named, uh, we can see that it's uh, a working color picker. We can pick colors, we can change the colors. Uh, we can pick uh, the super group and then all the colors of these inside the group will change also. We have the parlets separate, so that if we change the color of the supergroup, the parlets will not change color. And that's all what we wanted. But it would be nice that we could identify also uh, which picture is what. So that's why we go to the image library. And we pick an image for each kind of uh, fixture that we have. Later we can add that at new images if you want, but it's another video uh, where I explain how to create images for the image library. Uh, now we're going to get a beam. This is a small opening, it's the beam. The spot opens a little more and the wash uh, has a bigger, even bigger angle. angle. And then we have some lead wash, a bigger lead wash, a smaller lead wash in the part and that's the images for now and some some conventionals okay we, we take this one and we put it on the uh the second row because our group two were the uh the pointer the, the beams so here are the beams on uh, row two the same thing we do with the next uh in row number three that were the spots and we have uh, washes in row three there were lead wash and we put them in row three uh well row four actually because row one is the super group and i'm not going to put an image in there because it's uh it's a super group it's okay um well while you do this you have to take care that your patients uh, because if you stop this progress in, in the middle, when it's not uh, put all the pictures and all the images in here, then it might stuck and you might have to do it again. Nothing breaks, but you might have to work twice. And we're just doing this to not do too much work. Okay, so now we have our images and uh, we have our nicely working uh, color picker and then there's only one more button that I want to explain uh, the reason of this button there's a go pickers or call pickers option uh, when we go in go pickers which is the default value then uh, what it does in the color picker is when we pick one color or we pick several colors for for everything what it does is uh, does it go on on a sequence and uh, this sequence uh, is what's putting the color in that means that it will not be a part of the programmer as you can see the programmer is empty uh, on the other hand we might want to store our colors in another preset or another uh, thing in one moment 
so we might want to choose the colors and then uh, have it in the programmer so to get that we can just switch to call pickers and what it does it it will call all the uh, fixtures that are in our group and then set it set these fixtures to the color to the preset so uh, then it will be part of the programmer uh, during live uh, show I don't like this option uh, because when we clear the program and the color will be cleared uh, the color index here will not be cleared and it might lead to to confusion and during live performance I prefer to keep uh, this option off so to keep with with call with the go pickers and if we want to take out the, the color we can put it on white and the colors are out so we don't have to change the uh, in order to get it out from the uh, from from the um, how do you say it the program okay so this is all for now I hope you enjoyed this I hope you will enjoy my plugin and I hope you will spread the word and I hope that we'll meet again in another video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.